yo. Yo, world. Special, special, special guest on Rockers NYC TV. Buyer, manager extraordinaire, Canadian extraordinaire, human extraordinaire, Chris Gibbs. Chris Gibbs. Yo, on the real, man, you know what I mean? Uh, first things I just want to say is, I, I, he already knows this, but Chris is special to Marcus and I because he bought the first Rockers t-shirt ever. So I just had to let the world know that. At Union, New York. A big fan. Fan. Nah, seriously, so this is mad special. It seems recently, while doing Rockers NYC TV and looking at the floor today, uh, you cleaned house. And you have a new vision. That you've had a vision, but it seems like you streamlined it. Yeah. And I'll let you talk about that. Yeah, we, we you know we have a little bit basically in, in my humble opinion and this was started before I got here. Right. I just with you know, I I want I guess I've carried the you know, carried the torch or whatever while I've been here. But Union has been a place we basically broke what streetwear is today. Sure. But we broke it when there wasn't anything else like that. Streetwear is now kinda of becoming a very commercial entity, which is dope. Make that money. Live, hey, I'm trying to, you know, Word, I'm no doubt, about no to doubt. be too. But by the very default of what this store is, we are set up to offer something that's not readily available. So as streetwear becomes more commercially viable and commercially available, we have to kind of forge new ground and find out what that next is. Because even if we wanted to, like even if I was like, I don't you know, whatever, street that's what we do, we're gonna keep on selling what we've done, even if it's available at Macy's and Barney's right. and whatever on Melrose or Broadway in New York or whatever. Right. But the the fact is, like, um, the customer, our customer that we've generated, doesn't want it. They come here because they want something that's not readily available. They want a piece, something that nobody else on their block has. Well, so I mean, yeah. we have to, like, start kind of figuring out what's new and... We have much respect for all the brands we've carried in the past, present, future, but mostly it's the decisions usually made pretty simple for us and that like dudes make an active decision that like, hey, they're gonna go in another direction for, with their brand, something that doesn't quite work with what Union does. Right. So sometimes it ain't as simple as that. Sometimes heads go in that direction but don't understand why we can't go there either. And it's never personal, it's always business. When we forged these relationships with the Japanese people, we ended up starting to buy a couple of the brands that they do. And the biggest kind of thing that hurts, I won't say hurts us, but the biggest issue with us is there's not a lot of domestic brands, for whatever reason, that kind of put, that give you a whole line. Like, and that are willing to do it in this weird way that we need it done to be successful and that our customers want. And at the end of the day, especially right now, it's customer driven. But so I would, they would want like limited, they want a Supreme. They want a, you know, what it's like a domestic brand that's limited in distribution. Whereas in America, that's kind of like, you know, like Mark Echo's like, nah, nah, bro. Like how many transits can I be in? You know, yeah, like, no which is no big, I ain't mad at him. You know what I mean? That's his market. But we deal in this kind of weird market but in a lot of stores. There was, when we were, things have changed now. But when I first started working for Union, the brands that we sold were carried in two stores in America. I always tell people, like, if there's a Jamaican restaurant in Tokyo, most likely the dude who, want, like, went to, some Japanese dude went to Jamaica, had really good jerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? No I was like, no, I, want a, I want a restaurant. And went and found the best restaurant and paid the money to bring it over there because he knows he has economy that can support it. Whereas here in America, if there's a Jamaican restaurant, it's most likely because the dude moved over here, was working, doing whatever he does, and he's like, oh, there's no West Indian food here. And he I'm might not necessarily be as good as that one. Uh, he might not exactly. necessarily be He might Jamaican be really good, good, good but he might not be the best one. But, mm. And that's kind of how the, the, the difference between America and Japan. Like, you know, in Japan, they definitely have a little bit more kind of attention to detail. And my us selling it and our customer kind of wanting it, it's kind of pushed this market into like, you know, dudes here want to do better shit. And for example, 
you know, I had a t-shirt brand not too long ago, and I remember you used to go into the factory, and there'd right. be like some random dude who doesn't know, like, they're used to printing like five million t-shirts, and it doesn't, like, it's a, you know, whatever, it's in this concert tee, and it's all fucked up, but who cares, like, right. it's going to be for five dollars, and these dudes had to kind of be led by hand as to like, no, like, it's unacceptable to have that smudge there, or we, we need our label sewn in properly, we're paying you a premium for that. Right, right. And you'd have to go there and like lead them by hand on how to do things. Well, nowadays, mo a lot of these factories and a lot of these printers, they, all their business is coming from, like the, the recipe's out and the foundation has been laid. So a dude coming out the game now, which is cool, I ain't, like I said, I'm, I don't mean to say it's in a negative way, but some kid who's got a computer and some ideas can put it on a paper, give it to the printer, and the printer knows what to do. They've been led by the predecessors. But, you know what, let's get down to the nitty gritty. I think the special thing about Union LA goes hand in hand with Japanese. Yeah. The, the secret is out. Like, yeah. we have a lot of kids, yeah. either talented or not, yeah. you know, men and women, yeah. to start brands nowadays. No but, what makes good brands is the story. And not all those kids have the story. And I think Union LA and Union New York, especially Union LA, you guys find the story. Yeah. And with the American brands and the Japanese brands you find, there's a story if you want to speak on that. Like, the secret's out, but certain things sound lame, but it is keeping it real. What's real is when stuff comes from someone's heart. And yeah. I mean, for the most part, I've been doing this for so long, I don't mean to sound conceited, but when no I see a t-shirt design or a catalog, I pretty much can tell whether it's got that je ne sais quoi, that special little thing that makes it different from like, you know, I'm going to see a million t-shirts with skulls on it in the catalog this season. I'm going to see a million t-shirts with Biggie on it. I'm going to see a million, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah no what, doubt. But there's usually something... You left out Jordan, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's usually something that sets it apart. No doubt. I wish I could enumerate it. Even if I could, maybe I would. Maybe that's a trade secret. I don't know. But, you know, um, there's usually a little twist. Something that's like, oh, that's kind of different, you know. That's kind of like, oh, that's, that's unique. That's witty. That's not being done by these other 30 dudes who also get a TV t-shirt, you know. Yeah, no doubt. So, um, it's hard right now, I'll be honest, because we have a, like, the industry has grown, and I think a lot of vendors and a lot of customers expect that we should grow with it. But almost by default, there's a ceiling to how we can grow, how far we can grow. Uh, we're retailers, so we can only grow as big as the brands that we carry grow. And it's easier for brands to like, to me, and I don't, don't want to make, make a slight at anyone, but it's easier for brands to add new doors then put more into their product. Hmm. It's like I can make, like, I'm going to do this t-shirt. It's got skull. It's got a biggie skull on it. With mm. Jordan flying <laughs> in the background. Whatever. You know what I mean? Like, Where? I can keep on Hold printing on, this gun. Same, gun gun yeah, right. I can keep on printing the same t-shirt in different colors and add more doors all around America because people are now into what we do. You know what I mean? Or I could invest, which is hard. No doubt it's hard into like growing my brand, doing like proper cut and sew, and taking, doing whatever, doing some events, whatever it takes to grow your brand. And it's always easier to like go find more stores. But the problem is, how long are those stores going to rep you for? How long is that one design that you did definitely perfected and did? How far can that carry you? You're going to need to do something new. Nah, I mean, 